The term levelized cost of energy, LCOE, is one that you'll see all over the place. It's very regularly quoted in articles, conference papers, you name it. And so what I think it's useful to do now is to just introduce what it is or what it's supposed to be and give a brief kind of critique of when and when not it might be useful. So rather than use my words, here are some from the Energy Information Administration in the US who describe levelized cost of energy as a convenient summary measure of the overall competitiveness of different generating technologies. And they say it represents the per kilowatt hour cost of building and operating a plant over an assumed life cycle. The term duty cycle also refers to how that plant is operated, how often it operates. And so in effect, it's talking about the capacity factor and the actual energy output of the power plant compared to its potential energy output. So in other words, the idea of levelized cost of energy is that you're trying to capture, as, it, as the name suggests, cost of energy, the cost of a unit of energy from a power plant, but you're trying to capture it not at a particular moment in time, but levelized, averaged, if you like, over the whole lifetime of that power project. And the value of that is to allow you to compare different types of power project on hopefully a more level playing field. As an example, to build a solar power plant might cost more up front to build than a natural gas power plant. So the capital costs might be large, but over the next 25, 30 years, however long that plant operates for, you have very little ongoing costs. You've no fuel costs. The operating costs of solar PV, at least, are very low. It's just cleaning the panels occasionally. Whereas building and operating the natural gas power plant, your capital costs potentially look smaller per kilowatt, megawatt of capacity that you build. But then for the next 20 or 30 years, you've got to buy gas. And also your general operations and maintenance costs are more expensive because you've got moving parts and pipe work and other bits and pieces that just require more people and more maintenance. So what levelized cost is trying to do is to say, okay, well, solar might look expensive up front and gas might look expensive in the operational part, but over the total lifetime, if we add up all those costs, which one is actually the cheapest, which one is the most expensive relative to the amount of energy it produces? Now, while we're quoting from the EIA, it's also important to include this one at the bottom, which is their note that people don't make plant investment decisions simply based on levelized cost of energy. There's a whole bunch of other specific factors that are going to decide whether or not it's a good idea to invest in a power plant. We'll look at some of the inputs into levelized costs shortly, and as you'll be able to appreciate, those inputs will vary from project to project. The specific costs will vary from project to project. The duty cycle, the capacity factor might vary from project to project, depending where it is. There's potentially other costs such as taxes, which differ from territory to territory. So it's already introducing the idea that it's going to be very difficult to compare levelized costs of energy in one situation with another but also they're just making the point that as an investor, what you're looking for from a project is how much profit am I going to make? This kind of notional idea of a cost of energy over the life cycle is maybe interesting, but it's not your primary driver. What it will do, of course, is give you a sense as to how competitive you are compared to other sources in the same market. Is your lifetime cost of energy less or more than other competing sources. And that's the sort of thing that, for example, policymakers or governments are interested in when they're making long-term decisions or long-term strategies about what types of generating source to promote and which ones to try and deter. So in terms of how it's calculated, here's another quote. This one is from the UK government, and they define levelized costs as the ratio of the net present value of total costs, capital and operating, 
relative to the net present value of the electricity generated, both of these over the operating life of the plant. Again, you'll notice they talk about a generic plant, just to make the point that you'd really have to work out levelised cost of energy differently for every different plant you looked at. Governments obviously are looking in more general terms at do solar projects generally cost more or less over their lifetime than natural gas projects, as an example. So they're going to base their calculations on a generic plant, on a reasonable set of assumptions for the kind of average solar or gas plant. If you're not already familiar with it, this idea of net present value is a finance and accounting method of capturing the difference between the value of money today and the value of that same money in future. The reason for that being that the value of money should be able to grow, or I guess shrink. So if I have a thousand pounds today, it may be worth eleven hundred pounds in a year's time, if for example it's grown at a rate of ten percent. Another way of expressing that is that the net present value of eleven hundred pounds in a year's time, using a discount rate of ten percent, is a thousand pounds today. In other words, future values expressed in today's money will be smaller and how much smaller depends on the discount rate that you're assuming the discount rate giving you an assumption on how much present money can grow going into the future the further forward you go in time and the bigger the discount rate the bigger will be the difference between the future value and the present value how that's relevant to what we're talking about here is that if I'm looking at the finance of a power plant, I really should be applying discount rates to future cash flows, be they costs or revenues. And in levelised cost, those revenues are being produced by the energy that we generate. So that's why we also apply discount rate to the electricity, because it's resulting in a future cash flow. And some impacts of that, for example, are that if I looked at a nuclear power plant, I have some enormous decommissioning cost. But if that's in 40 years time, when I discount that back to a present value by applying some kind of discount rate, it will look much, much smaller. It also means that if I'm buying fuel for a natural gas power plant, the further forward in time I go, the more the cost of that fuel I can discount back to express in present value terms. On the other hand, if I'm building a solar power plant where the vast majority of my costs are today and I've got very little future costs, you're a little bit disadvantaged by this idea of discounting because the bulk of the cost structure of your project is present value anyway. There's only a few operational cost cleaning panels in future which you can reduce by discounting. So discounting will affect different projects differently because of the different cost structures. It all depends on the balance between present costs and future costs. So to come back to calculating levelised cost of energy, you'll see some simple equations such as this one. On the face of it, it may look quite complicated, but effectively what we've got on the top line are our costs, investment costs, maintenance costs, fuel costs, and on the bottom line, we've got the energy we produced. And on both sides, we've got this sum symbol time from 1 to n, where n would be the lifetime of the project. So what that's basically saying is that on both the top of the equation and the bottom of the equation, you're summing up costs and you're summing up energy every year. And also both on top and bottom of the equation, you've got this term which is reducing those costs according to the discount rate that you've chosen. And I won't get into the maths of why applying the discount rate looks like that here. But hopefully you can see that what on the face of it looks like a horrible mathematical relationship is actually a fairly simple cost on the top, energy on the bottom, both of them summed over a project lifetime and with a discount rate applied to bring them all back to a present value so that you can compare them. But you will see some much more complicated equations such as this one. And the difference really is that the second one is just taking into account more things. So you've got investment cost, you've got some operational costs, annual operation, which will include fuel costs. And on the bottom, you've got energy costs. 
they've just incorporated more other factors into this calculation. So they're including depreciation, for example, of the investments you've made, the assets that you've built. And the reason why that's helpful is that based on your tax rates, you can actually reduce some of your cost burden by offsetting depreciation. So you'll actually notice that there's a, a minus sign before that term. They've also included debt within here. So LP is loan payments. So how much debt you're paying each period, the interest you're paying on that debt. Again, based on the tax rate, you can actually offset that against your costs. And then if your project is worth something at the end of the life cycle that you're analyzing, you could actually sell it for something. You could apply a residual value. So that top line is still basically investment costs plus operating costs, but it's just that they've added some debt payments to the costs and they've reduced their costs by the tax benefits of offsetting interest and depreciation and also by selling the project for some value at the end. And then on the bottom line, again, it's basically energy over the project lifetime. The only difference is that they've included what they call a system degradation rate. So they've made this assumption that over time, the output of the power plant will vary from its initial energy, kilowatt hours they've stated here. And in particular, it will reduce over time because it would degrade by a certain percentage each year. So it's the same principle, but it's just been calculated in a more complex and some would say more comprehensive manner which immediately introduces one problem if you're just reading levelized cost of energy numbers in a presentation or an article unless you have some information on how they were calculated and how comprehensive the various inputs that we used were it can very easily be meaningless to compare one number with another also numbers will vary according to the discount rate that's been chosen the choice of discount rate can be quite a subjective thing. It can vary according to who's doing the calculation, but it can make quite a big difference to how you're expressing the present value of both your future costs and your future energy. And then things like the energy itself will vary according to the resource and the capacity factor of the particular project. So if you're in a very sunny area, a solar project will produce more energy than in a not very sunny area. It's kind of an obvious statement, but what that means is if someone is just stating levelized cost of energy for solar in such and such a country, chances are they're going to be talking about the best possible energy resource rather than necessarily the typical energy resource across the whole country. And the units here are going to be money on the top line, dollars, euros, whatever you want to pick, and energy, megawatt hours, kilowatt hours on the bottom line. So the units of levelized cost of energy would be something like dollars per kilowatt hours or dollar per megawatt hours. If you have less cost for the same amount of energy, then the cost of energy is lower. Equally, if you have the same cost but produce more energy, then again, your levelized cost of energy will be lower. So cheaper projects with better energy production produce cheaper energy over the lifetime of that project. That statement should be kind of obvious, but levelized cost of energy is just trying to capture it in an actual number. So if I simplify those rather complicated looking equations, what we have is levelized cost of energy is lifetime costs discounted divided by lifetime energy, again, discounted. And of course I can rearrange that equation. I can multiply both sides by lifetime energy discounted and I end up with this. And that hopefully looks reasonably similar to what we've seen before. When we talked about the basic variables in power project economics, we had revenues on the left, which was energy multiplied by price, and costs on the right of various types, installed costs, ongoing costs. And we said that to make money, you obviously want your revenues to be bigger than your costs, not just today, but over the duration of the project. Now, if we're talking about levelized cost of energy, trying to capture the cost of a unit of energy, you could argue, well, maybe we shouldn't include our carbon credits and capacity payments. So let's remove that. Although you could argue that if you included 
extra revenues in effect they help to subsidize a lower cost of energy so perhaps we should include those in our calculation again it's all just making the point that unless you know how someone has calculated levelized cost of energy it can be dangerous to compare different figures and draw too many conclusions but if i remove those for now the only thing we didn't mention when we talked about revenues and costs before was the idea of discounting them so bringing them back to a present value using a discount rate so we could do that and then really the only difference between the levelized cost relationship at the top and our revenue and cost breakdown beneath it is that at the top we've got megawatt hours multiplied by dollars per megawatt hours equaling costs in other words we have this and if we think about the lower part of this chart for my revenues to equal my costs effectively my price is a break-even price if i can charge more than that i'll make money if i can charge less than that i'm going to lose money again over the lifetime of our project and on a discounted basis so sometimes that's quite a useful way to conceptualize levelized cost of energy rather than thinking about it as a cost of energy think about it as the minimum average price of energy that you could charge for a project over its lifetime such that the revenues it made from selling energy equal the costs in producing that energy and finally just to stress the point again that while our concept of levelized cost of energy seems quite straightforward just the costs divided by the energy over a lifetime of a project the reality is that if you look at the information below that there are lots and lots of different costs that you could and could not choose to include there's potentially other revenues you might choose to include or not to include and so how you calculate levelized cost in detail can make a big difference to the result that you get so my advice when you're looking at levelized cost figures is always if you're comparing two different figures in two different studies there's a limit to how much useful information you can draw from that because those different studies might have very different assumptions on the amount of energy production on the various costs they've included and on the methodology they've used to calculate where levelized cost of energy is more useful is if you're comparing figures for different types of power generating source from the same study where well, hopefully they've used the same methodology, consistent assumptions and so on between the different calculations. Okay, thank you.